Hello and welcome to the sixth edition of the Analyst Talk straight from the EO Dental Congress in Stockholm, in which Morgan Stanley's MedTech analyst Michael Jüngling interviews the Straumann CEO Marco Cadola. Marco, the, uh, the dental implant industry in the past has been known for very strong operating leverage to uh, strong top line growth. Uh, and we saw this pre the financial crisis. Now, as we're going out of the financial crisis, does this leverage rule of, let's say, 10% growth equating to 100 basis point of margin expansion still hold true for Stroman? Basically, this ho uh, rule still holds true. So 10% growth, top line equates more or less 1% improvement at the EBIT margin level. However, um, we might decide that part of this, uh, this incremental margin we take to invest into future growth. Because at the end, we want to grow year by year our business in order to actually keep this leverage ongoing. I'll give you an example. Um, we uh, decided uh, two years ago that we actually built uh, the value segment through an, a known network of insurance and companies. So to take the Neodem brand and globalize the Neodem brand. And obviously, the revenues which we generate outside of Brazil with the Neodem brand and our own subsidiaries is diluting the overall EBIT margin of the group. And it will take a couple of years until we actually achieve the same margins. So consciously, uh, we might choose to actually take part of this leverage and reinvest it into a project to fuel growth over the next years. But basically, the rule obviously still holds true. Um, the industry has gone through a very meaningful amount of industry consolidation. We've really recently seen Densply and also Serona, and we're seeing a broad-based offering from these sort of companies. By going it alone, are you putting the company at risk? What you're pointing at is the fact that we, the competition, competitive landscape has changed quite dramatically over the last years. If you look back, you know, five, ten years, our key competitors were Noble, were Simos, Rei, Astra. Today. Our key competitors are the Danaho Group, is the Henry Schein Group, is the Dent Supply Group. So companies who are actually capable of covering the whole life cycle of a tooth, from prevention to tooth replacement. So the, 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 the game has changed completely. Our reaction to that is that uh, we clearly came to the conclusion just selling implants and prosthetic parts is not, will not do the job uh, mid-long term. However, we still want actually to focus on tooth replacement. That's our strategic ambition, to be recognized as the total solution provider when it comes to replacing teeth for dentists and for labs. So what are we doing concretely? We are actually extending uh, our reach, the, the product portfolio, which we actually will commercialize to the dentist and the labs through um, equipment, so actually allowing the dentists uh, to work with our products digitally or semi-digitally. Even um, having products from us when it comes to chair side solutions. So in practice milling capabilities, including even materials which are Stroman branded, some of them even developed in-house. At the same, we are actually targeting when it comes to the labs. So we are actually reacting to this changed competitive landscape by extending our reach, our product portfolio, and really becoming a total solution provider for tooth replacement. The industry has been subject to incremental changes to the product over the last 20, 25 years. And I would argue if this continues, we'll have commoditization over the medium term. What can Stroman do to de-risk the situation of being in a very commoditized business over the next two to three years? I tend to agree that if you just focus on the implant itself, the innovation potential is, is relatively limited. You can actually come up with new materials. Uh, we did that with rock solid, which is you know, a new material which actually gives more choice, more options to the, to the dentist. We also came up out with the, with, the, with the first premium ceramic implant, still a monotype implant. We are obviously working on a two-piece ceramic implant. So on the material side, we, th we think there is still potential to innovate, to make the implant better. On the surface side, um, we believe that with SL Active, we already have the gold standard, and it's hard to actually improve on this. On the connection side, uh, we also believe that actually uh, there is not a lot of potential. Where we see most of the potential is actually to provide complete solutions. Um, 
from actually planning a case until at the end completely restoring the case and to get everything you need for such a case out of one single company with one brand on all the products which you need. And uh, this is something uh, not a lot of companies can deliver. You have these small, mid-sized, smaller companies, implant companies, they just focus on the implant and the prosthetics, but they will never be able to actually provide to the dentists and the labs an integrated solution, starting with the planning software and, and ending with the final restoration, including regenerative products, including equipment and materials. And that's how we believe we will actually differentiate ourselves against all these smaller and mid-sized companies.